In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the video of a moving object. To do so, I first need to collect the video. I've collected a short little video of the motion of my dog, Max, running across the backyard. Um, we'll rewind that and kind of step through it. And what you're going to notice is that Max comes into the viewing area and he's moving along uh, across the backyard. Here he comes. And you'll notice that there are three orange stakes. Max is running parallel to those stakes. And I'm shooting the video from an angle that is perpendicular to that line of motion. I want Max to be running as close as possible to those stakes. So that's my video. That's how I collect it. It's short and sweet. And now what I need to do is I need to analyze it. That's the second step. I happen to be using a software program called Logger Pro from Vernier uh, Technology and Software. And uh, there's many different applications you can use, but that's the one that I picked. And what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to calibrate the program to tell it that from the first orange stake to the third orange stake is 12 feet. Only it's going to want to know this information in meters. And that 12 feet is identical to 3.66 meters. That's found by dividing the 12 feet by 3.28 feet per meter. So I have calibrated that, that information. The program now knows uh, how to measure distance. Now I'm going to get uh, the video fast forward to the point where Max moves into the video screen. And then, then I'm going to begin to click on Max in each successive frame of the video. So there we see Max. I'm going to get this little tool right here. It's a uh, way of tracking the motion of a point on the moving object. And so I'm going to pick Max's nose uh, just because it's easy to find his no nose in each successive frame. So as we go from frame to frame, I keep clicking on Max's nose with this little tool in the software program. You'll notice the nose is moving up and down and it's also moving more significantly from left to right. And by doing this, what the software knows is the position of the nose every one fifteenth of a second, every one thirtieth of a second. And so um, there we have the movement of Max's nose in the video. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, st stop all that and I'm going to have the software program show me uh, some data. So here we have data of, in the form of a graph of the red dots being the X position of the nose. It was moving significantly from the left to the right over the course of time. And the, the blue dots represent the vertical motion of the nose. And, and that vertical motion was something that I really wasn't that interested in. Um, interesting, but I'm just going to get rid of that. And just, oops, I'm going to get rid of the vertical motion and uh, just focus on the on the X motion. So there we have the horizontal motion of Max's nose. Now the software program allows me to do this. I can find the slope of, of those points. And so it performs a, a best fit and then it tells me that the slope of the line is 5.193 meters per second. So the slope of a position versus time graph must give me information about the meters per second or the velocity of the object. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, which is kind of interesting, is I'm going to go back here to the menu and I'm going to select more. And I'm going to also plot the x velocity of the object. And so what I see at this point is uh, red triangles show up. And those red triangles show me the changes in the x velocity. So max is actually slowing down and then speeding up and slowing down and then speeding up. And those slow down, speed up speed up um, must be just simply associated with the stride that Max takes every time his foot plants under the ground he slows down and every time he pushes off the ground with his front uh, feet he, he speeds up so uh, we're seeing slowing down and speeding up I'm going to do the same thing I did previously I'm going to take the slope and I'm going to take it of the of, of both of the lines this time uh, so x velocity and x position and so I, I, I notice I get two little boxes here, and those two little boxes tell me the slope. And again, for the 
x, well, x position, the slope was 5.193 meters per second. That's the average velocity. And for the x velocity lines, the slope was 0.778 meters per second per second. The fact that that's meters per second per second must mean that the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. Now, um, another thing I can look at in this video is I can look at the um, data. And so I see a description of max in the form of numerical data. I see a description of max here in the form of a position time and velocity time graph. And if I go back to the video screen, I see a description of max's motion in terms of dots. And there's one last thing that this software program allows me to do, and that is I can get a description of max in the form of a um, video uh, of a vector diagram. So just kind of bear with me here while I um, manipulate this little program to get me a vector diagram. There's a lot of manipulating that has to go on here in order to, to do this. I'm going to get a, an x velocity vector um, shown here, and uh, I'm going to have it labeled v for velocity, x for horizontal, and that. Oh, let's scale this a little bit so that the vectors show up a little larger. Okay, that should do it. And so now what we notice is that as Max moves across the screen. We see these little velocity vectors showing up, and those little velocity vectors simply indicate the, vo the velocity of max in the form of a vector attached to his nose. So uh, we'll do this in kind of slow motion. So there you see max moving in every second frame a vector shown. Those vectors are all about the same length, maybe increasing just a little bit, but mostly about the same length, pointing in the direction that Max is moving. And so video analysis allows you to do a lot of things. It allows you to get uh, a dot diagram. It allows you to get uh, graphs of position versus time and velocity versus time. It allows you to get numerical data. And finally, it allows you to get this little vector diagram. Very useful tool for analyzing the motion of an object. Thanks for listening.